Someone's cursing, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's puffling, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's growing, my lord. Late night lunch. Oh lord, late night lunch. This is a post-watershed production. Good evening and welcome to Late Night Large. I am your forbidden absence, Aaron Bliss, and alongside me sits an appealing stout, Mike Large. Evening, everyone. The theme this week is uh, taverns, boozers, alehouses, dens of iniquity, lady liquors, libation lair. Pubs. <laughs> Public houses. It's been a, a subject close to Mike's heart for many years. <laughs> And a subject that uh, was bound to be covered at some stage. A subject, hopefully, for some mirth and merriment tonight. Mike, first of all, tell us how important a public house is to your social sphere. Very. <laughs> Pubs are, you know, they're the centre of the, the community, aren't they? Okay. Well, they were at one time. I don't know. Are no, they, they are. They are in this village, anyway. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. True. Touché. Okay, I mean, especially if you live in America, pubs are apparently, public houses are deemed the, uh, well, the the epitome of Britishness or Englishness. Do you think England is in kind of encapsulated in pubs? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the spirit uh, of England, if you forgive my brilliant pun. As much as, it, I'm not sure what that says for the country or the I people think it says everything. in the country. <laughs> On this most English of days when a, a Syrian slayed a dragon. Do you think it's a working class thing? Is it a class thing? No, no. I don't... Let me, let, me, I... Let, let me give this to you, OK? You, as I mentioned Dickens. Cool. Do you think pubs originally... Uh, do you think pubs have, have changed their purposes or, or, or have they just widened their demographics? Because, to my understanding, and again, this is probably just based on the kind of Dickensian literature and what have you, pubs rose up... Again, f- for the working classes, they they were a way for the working classes to associate with each other, to uh, you know uh, let off some steam, Depends. cope with the pressure of uh, of the society they were living under, and it was also a way for the hoi polloi, the aristocracy, to keep them out of harm's way, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Whereas you look at it now, it pubs was- very much cater to much wider kind of so audience. It depends what pub you go to. It depends where you are. But it wasn't country, always or... like it wasn't always like that. I mean, it's got that way because of, you know, how much capitalism's expanded over the last 30 odd years, but do you not think well, I guess. So okay, let, say say yeah. the 70s. I know neither of us were around, but right. you wouldn't have thought many middle class people would be caught in in pubs as such, would you? They'd be trend, more like trendy wine bars and what have you. I guess. Yeah, no, I see I see what you mean. You wouldn't get such a mixture of social classes, really. No. But, I mean, I guess it can only really be a good thing. Yeah, of course. I mean, anything where people of diverse backgrounds can mix and mingle and, get, of course, get inebriated together is is a, probably a, a good social tool. Get my it? grubby mitts on some posh toddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, mm. and obviously the, the posh toddy looking for their uh, bit of rough, eh, Mike? Yeah, backstreet guys. <laughs> backstreet guys. <laughs> Someone will take them up a dirty alley. That was uncalled for. Is there an argument that there's a lot of inauthentic pubs now? Obviously, we use Weatherspoons as an obvious example of the the brewery chain. That now it's there's another tier of management now. It's almost like the landlords are only employees of the brewery chain. Yeah. And their cut is a lot smaller. Hence, why so many pubs seem to be going out of business these days. Yeah. No, that's certainly Would something that's that? happened. Yeah, I'd say that's... But what I mean is that I think personally that's connected with what I was talking about. The quest for originality, right? You go somewhere new, you know, and a, a quirky little pub catches your eye, and you go in, I mean, OK, it's a cliche if they have a log fire or whatever, but if there's something a bit unusual about it, like, for instance, you know, that there are pubs like with you know, a collection of board games or some something that makes it stand out and you think, oh... I've never seen that before. Or, I don't know, weird paintings, mm. sculptures, all kinds of things. 
things that make you kind of raise your eyebrow and go and, and you know then you go home and tell your friends and go oh there, there was this little pub we went to really really funny quirky place now in you know years ago that was down to the landlord landlady whoever that was their personal investment you know in the place do you know what i mean that was yeah, their personality yeah, yeah. that they imprinted on that Whereas now no, it's not you get brewery chains who say we need to make it you know we need to make it quirky we need to make it original eclectic we need to draw people in people want different looking pubs but if that's you know a brewery chain that's made that decision you know doesn't that remove the character out of it doesn't have quite have the same feel does it obviously you're talking about how it's changed over time mm. but there are still differences you see in places different places you go like for example a village pub would be very different to one in a city v- village pubs generally generally tend to be untouched by the brewery chains although there are obviously examples well, of that's not obviously not the, always the case but yeah mm. you do get yeah. more likely to get a authentic yeah. originality in village pubs yeah. yeah, so you got rather them than again. so that yeah, um, yeah that's interesting. Each to their own, I guess. At what different people look for in a pub. What would you like to see? I've, uh, what, yeah, what would draw you into a pub <coughs> birds. and make you tell people? Now, obviously, the pub can't really affect strippers. The clientele. Strip club. <laughs> strip. Strip pub. <laughs> strip pub club. Pub, Top pub, topless barmaids, isn't we? <laughs> yeah, that draw me in. We know what would draw Mike into a pub. Topless barmaids, free bar snacks, free bar. Yeah. <laughs> every wall panelled with flat screen TVs showing yeah, every a, game. Get the football on, yeah. The... See, okay, show me a pub like that, I won't leave. <laughs> <laughs> now, Oops. pubs, as we know, social theatre. Yeah. The, there are a few things that, that people are fond of in pubs. Uh, the most obvious thing we're, we're not going to touch on that yet we all know why most people go into pubs originally but there are also little side shows going on that uh, that interest people and, and keep people coming back pub snacks for instance these are snacks people don't eat them in other circumstances really do they pork scratchings yeah peanuts peanuts like crisps generally che- cheese lits yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah scampi yeah, yeah. fries oh, bacon fries yeah, 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 yeah. the funny thing is remember they come in those packets those tiny packets and you would never buy them from a shop would you you no, never buy a packet that small that, so that's that's what we mean by pub snacks they are defined by being in a pub you would not buy that size of of treat in any other circumstance you try and think exclusively pub snacks oh right exclusively pub snacks. yeah because we all know pubs have like latched onto oh we'll, we'll have a few bags of walkers but that's not really a pub snack Mr Porky obviously classic uh, standard. standard yeah classic uh, pub supplier of salty treats yeah. but yeah pork scratchings do you know what I remember the days when you used to be able to buy tangy toms oh, at pubs I love tangy toms I know Sad, much missed sadly missed I bet you can still buy them up north you're probably right you can buy a lot of great crap that we used to buy when we were kids Let's go up north. north. Let's go. I, well, I was in Lincoln the other day. Got some great stuff. Why didn't you bring some back? Well, I did, but I ate it. Oh, so I got, got old it. school one bar. Uh, oh. Tango flavoured tango bar. They even had, right, this blue bubblegum drink, 10p. Now, See, that took me back. Why doesn't stuff cost that anymore, like here? To be fair, it was utter crap. But still... It doesn't matter. I know. And it, Happy Shopper, you know oh. Happy Shopper? That's still big up north. They, Is it? Yeah, it's still a good, co- a solid company up north. The only thing that would make me want to go up north, that is. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. Like, no, the people are fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love yeah, the northerners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Some of them. So, <laughs> of course, we stay away from Mersey. So, I'm <laughs> just kidding, anybody. Well, anyone yeah. who might come really from minute. that area. So, uh, pub snacks. Do you are you uh, are you a man for pub snacks? Yeah, why you of course asking? you are. Why, I've seen you. Why are you asking I, questions that you know the answer? Sorry, to? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you many a time. I'm top pub snacker. You're you're, pre- you're pretty much, I think, the only person I've seen who regularly orders his pint. With a bag of crisps, bag of pork scratches. Yeah. Should, should, we, should, we, should we do we mention pubs specifically? Talking about them. Anyway, yeah. I will. The Red Lion hot dogs now. Ah, uh, the Red Lion in Dennington. I was about to mention that because as we're talking about pub snacks, 
that's one area in which pubs can really strike out on their own you know with their originality is you know with the diversity of snacks yeah now let's be the fair the idea was a yeah, bloody brilliant exactly. one exactly let's, let's be fair when you're in a pub it's been proven that when people are intoxicated they don't want salads they don't want fruit they veg. make friends with salad yeah exactly you you don't want anything that's going to uh, be good for your constitution despite no, you, the fact you're battering yourself with drink you want something greasy and horrible and you want something that packs a punch as far as taste goes I wouldn't be surprised to see pubs in the future serving kebabs <laughs> I can't wait anyway it, to be honest that's broad, broadened us off because uh, pub snacks if you're limiting it to pub snacks the hot dogs probably just about come in because they only need to be warm briefly but obviously pub snacks is different to pub food and pub food as well has its own little niche lest we forget for instance the basket of chips oh yeah yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, surely pubs patented the basket of chips yeah I'd say so I can't think of any uh, other situation no. you have a basket of chips no no pubs classic pub foods and pub snacks that's what you know that's what keeps the uh, slightly less hardcore drinkers coming back I would say as I said I, I, I talked about cigarettes as well didn't I that if you could still buy them I'm pretty sure you can yeah I'm not sure in the future though I saw again while we were up north when I was in Lincoln there was a notice posted on a cigarette vending machine saying uh, due to new legislation we will no longer be selling cigarettes in this so I think I think along with the packaging the covering up of the packaging I believe they're now making it illegal to sell cigarettes in vending machines. One of the finest moves by the Labour government, personally, was the smoking ban in pubs. Mm. Well, we would say that, as non-smokers. Ah, but I've even heard smokers defending it and saying it was a good oh, idea. Oh, I, I have as well. I've heard, of, I've heard... The thing is, there's been, there's been like unwarranted positives for both sides. There was obvious positives for non-smokers. You can have food wherever in a pub without the threat of getting mouth cancer. You didn't have to cough your lungs out. You didn't have to like breathe through your hand all night. You, you know, you don't have to wash your clothes for the, the beer you'd spilt down it, as opposed to the smoke that had reeked, it stuck to it. And it, I mean, there's been unwarranted side effects or, or positive side effects from it as well that maybe weren't anticipated. You can ha you have like lovely smoking areas now in pubs. So yeah, it's given them an true. extra dimension. And especially if you're a bit of an antisocial smoker, all of a sudden you're forced in like into a small area with like minded people. What better opportunity, for instance, to chat someone up that you uh, you quite fancy the look of than when you're standing right next to them smoking I've, a cigarette. I've gone into I don't smoke. <laughs> but I've I've gone into smoking areas for that reason. It to your advantage. For most people who aren't might large obviously it's quite difficult to speak to strangers and the only time it becomes slightly easier is when you're forced into a situation a scenario where you're in close quarters and you instantly have something in common you know that's why most people meet their partners at school work things like that but of course in a smoking area ideal especially if your said crush happens to be lacking a light yeah well there you go instant Come on, baby, light my style. fire. Perhaps wouldn't say that. <laughs> Perhaps that's where you've been going wrong. Uh, thanks, Mike. So, do you think the smoking ban overall has been positive? Yeah. So, do you think people were wrong to say that it would spell the death of some pubs? Well, clearly it hasn't. I'd probably argue that there there have been a very select few that probably have. Mm. But no, no, no. These no, no. no, these pubs I'm thinking of. You may, you know you got the grimy who yeah, but who hard ha drinking cl uh, uh, pubs anyone everyone think of anyone and everyone you know or even know of mm. have you ever heard of anyone that doesn't go to a pub anymore because they can't smoke inside no oh, if they want to go to the point. pub they'll go to the pub although you know Mike we should also you know mention that we do come from generally in the in the main uh, an affluent middle class area. Whereas, you know, if you were to go, say, to a very working-class pub where the clientele were of a certain age and of a certain persuasion, perhaps that has affected their trade, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I think you are. But I think overall it's been a massive positive. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Well, it's... And it's moving us in the right direction. It is very, like, definitely cultural progress. Like you progress. say, everyone doesn't have to go home with their clothes 
like stinking of it or like wake up the next day with a load of like black bogeys and stuff that's just disgusting to, I'm just saying I'm just adding it in there I'm just throwing oh it in there my what you saying you never had that no that's you're such oh, a liar you're a liar that's vile mate it's not vile iconic drunk people Mike iconic Large. drunks that you might come across in pubs Mike Large <laughs> give me no 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 hold on let's try and go through some of the characters for instance when you go into a pub there's always one guy or girl whoever who spends the whole night on the fruit machine and doesn't talk to anyone yeah you've got your person that will you've got your people that will just orientate themselves around a, a jukebox or something like that and just mm. uh, you've got the your, thing is with got... the, yeah but a jukebox you I mean, as opposed to a fruit machine... Yeah, you do get the people who get really arsy about the jukebox. Yeah. Like, you know, they'll kind of barge in if they see anyone approaching the jukebox. They'll kind of uh, complain if their songs haven't come on after a while. And then you realise, after you've staggered up and selected a song late in the night, that two hours later, all of their songs have only just finished playing. <laughs> yeah, that's a pain in the ass. So, yeah, those people are bastards. Um, you got your, you got your people that just sit in the corner and drink by themselves you're quite pe- normally older people that will just sit in there and yeah. just happily sit there all night and just, dr- and just the, drink to themselves and the, and the head just nods slightly from yeah, side yeah, to yeah. side and then maybe you, the odd oh, hey, hey, every time someone they know walks in yeah uh, what else you got well you obviously you've got your your standard Larry knob <laughs> Like who ruins everyone's that'll, night that'll have a look at someone they don't recognise who the fuck are you or you know take offence to things really easily where normally they wouldn't and you know. and then you get then you get the classic locals diving in and going no 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 it's not worth it it's not worth it yeah, yeah, yeah. you're bad sunshine that kind of thing if you say so uh, <laughs> you, you get uh, what else do you get you get your you get your cheeky chappies oh god let me guess, you fall into this category. Well, you can make you you can <laughs> make your you own. T- you, yeah, you tell me which one I fall into. <laughs> but well, Larry Twan on again. Oh, uh, uh, cheeky uh, chappies! Also, well, I'm d- just happy to be there. You know, just go dance around a bit. I'd also mingle. Okay, get involved in everyone. <laughs> Not like that. You filthy. <laughs> Speak yeah, to anyone, okay. go around, makes their way round the pub as a, obviously the opposite to the sitting alone in the corner, just drinking quietly to themselves. Yeah, and uh, in that same category, you've got your jokers. You've okay, got your jokers, yeah, the people okay. that will just reel off the jokes. You know, perhaps they they're the builders. You know, to, yeah. they they spend spend all day to send the text to each other like jokes oh, and yeah. that. They've always got something some jokes. You've got your storytellers, raconteurs. Again, yeah. you're normally the your bar room older raconteurs. people. Um, yeah, always got a story. I'd also for everything. F- I'd, oh, definitely, because they always think their life is very much more interesting than everyone else's. But I'd also go as far to say, in that same category as the like joke tellers and that, there's always the person who gets the stage of drunk where they consider it their duty to cheer up anyone who looks miserable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know those people. You're sat there just trying to mind your own business, and they'll come over and they'll be like, smile. Come on, come over with us, have a dance. These kind of people. Obviously, yeah, go on. Who you, well, I was just suggesting sometimes you might want to glass them, but they are generally good natured, genial characters. Obviously, their fatal flaw, their fatal mistake is trying to get the person who's been stuck to the uh, fruit machine the whole night only left it for uh, toilet breaks, or maybe not even toilet breaks, maybe they just relieved themselves down the side of the fruit machine or to get drinks and scowled at anyone who came near the machine do not try and get them on the dance floor or even get them to converse with you in any way it's not worth it unless you know them obviously <laughs> even then it's not worth it I would argue also another another person another classic that I'd throw in is the mutton dressed as lamb there's oh, always the older yeah, woman yeah, yeah. usually wearing too much makeup completely sozzled She's she's you know, hanging she's, out of her dress. She's in her forties, yeah. Make, and she, but she 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 thinks she's you know twenty years younger than she is, or she likes to think that she still gets all the guys' attention. Yeah, she thinks she can walk in there. Mike Large is going to turn his head. Now. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on That's what she's classic, wearing. Right? <laughs> depends on what she's she, wearing. He still might, but uh, yeah, middle-aged trumpet. They're always one of those, and they're they're deadly because. Once the cougar gets her arm around you and she's like, 
All right, my love. You having a good night? And she'll lean right in close so you can smell her breath. And look down the top. And look down the top if you if you're so inclined, yeah. And which I normally am. Of course, because you're usually in a worse state than she is. Get your stinking rat out. It's late night, large. Mike, one of the great things about pubs, of course, is you know the idea of draft beers, a beer from the tap. Local ales. Yeah, are you a fan of local ales? Obviously, uh, there's Camera, you know, the campaign for real ale, and you know, there's I think there's other campaigns for you know, make sure local ale doesn't die out. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, we're lucky enough to be well, lucky enough. I, I don't drink it, but we're lucky enough to be pretty close to the Hook Norton Brewery, of course, pretty renowned uh, nationwide for for their ales. Well, well, they won. They won international awards. Did they really? Oh, yeah. okay, that's impressive. Okay, are you are you a fan of Local ale or real ale? Um, I'll be honest. When I go to the pub, really, I just drink lager. Yeah, but I mean, I I don't not like. Like, did you? So you don't have a refined palate, though. You don't, for instance, you you can taste a really nice, distinguished ale from a a bog standard one. I like to think I could. I probably not as well as people that actually drink it on a regular basis. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, obviously, I I could drink it and know what I like but that's a bit different do you think it's an uh, do you think it's an age thing do you think it's more more I older guess, gentlemen who well, get into the ales well it's just yeah well yeah but because the, they've time. been drinking it for longer haven't they so, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean that's for God's sake. that's it's kind of naturally yeah no but I mean for instance you know there's stages in your life generally yes in your in your early 20s and probably up to early 30s if not later you know, you you drink you Lager, drink to get yeah, drunk. Yeah. yeah, you drink to get drunk. You drink socially, I, I what everyone else is drinking, and what what you think the women will <laughs> like to see you drinking. Uh, and it's only you know when you get to that stage where you're comfortable with yourself, and maybe your circumstances, you know, maybe you're in a family or whatever, then maybe you start getting some more refined drinking of the real ales and what have you. Would, do you think that's true? Generally, I mean, and not drinking out of tankards. Yeah. Oh. I like classic you. tankards I love the old guys I don't know if John Cheney does it I love I love the distinguished old guys no, who take their own like... tankards oh okay but there are old guys who, who come in in uh, you know their suit jackets or their their tweed jackets and they carry their own tankard yeah, in there well some of heard from behind the bar they leave or, the, yeah, they their local, own tankards yeah. they leave them there I, local I, legends yeah I used to I went through a phase of <laughs> drinking out of tankers just because I thought it was cool <clears throat> really yeah. it is cool it's very cool so I think. specifically request one of course that's another mark of a great pub isn't it how they treat their locals you know if yeah. you make your locals feel special then you know you're going to get a good clientele because any pub can pack them in on Saturday nights it's can you get you know the the locals, the handful of locals, to make sure during the week that you're making up enough money to cover your overheads. If you get what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you make your money at the weekends. Exactly. And then you make the big money at the weekends. Okay. Another great facet of pubs, obviously, is pub games. In any other circumstance, grown men probably wouldn't play these games with each other, would they? But you get into a pub scenario. Things like backgammon, dominoes. I don't think chess is really massive in pubs. Uh, can you think of any other games that... Darts. Aunt darts, Sally. Darts. There you go. I mean, Aunt Sally particularly. <clears throat> what other scenario could that have Paul, sprung up in? Yeah. Paul, Paul and Snooker, yeah. yeah. Obviously they're not exclusive to... No, pubs, but, but I, I think Aunt, no, Sally, no Aunt Sally and Darts, definitely. Yeah. You know, their origins are in pubs, aren't they? Yeah. They are exclusive pub sports. Drinking sports. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But drinking games, obviously, uh, are <clears throat> part and parcel of the uh, pub experience. But have you ever played backgammon? Or yeah, you know? I played. Oh, like, really? I played. Yeah, I played all sorts of games dominoes? in pubs. Dominoes. Yeah, played against, <laughs> played against you die. old man. <laughs> dominoes. Wow. Yeah. I thought the only dominoes you were familiar with was a pizza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. No, I'm up for anything card games and that. Yeah. Card games. Yeah, of course, because obviously you can't get the smoky little pub, uh, smoky little back rooms in pubs now, other than. I guess uh, crime syndicates, pubs, but um, you know the old poker in the back room, the smoky back room. That, that's always an iconic scene, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I'm always one to get involved in something <coughs> like that if it's going on. Why not? <clears throat> the one major facet of pubs that we haven't touched on yet is, of course, the name of pubs, because of course, there's a lot of different ways you can name a pub. I mean, if you go on Wikipedia, you get pubs that are named after royals, ships, 
places, cru- mythical creatures, mythical creatures, animals, farms, crude puns, all these kind of things. You never know what you're going to get with a pub name, but through two of the the big names. Uh, as far as pub research goes I think there was the British Pub Association and Camera, the campaign for real ale according to them, the most popular pub names in the UK are the following The Crown The Red Lion Royal Oak, White Hart King's Head King's Arms, Queen's Head The Swan The Railway, The Plough The White Hat, uh, sorry the White Horse rather, The Bell New Inn Rose and Crown. Oh, no, sorry, and that's it. That, that's the, that's the oh, yeah. definitive get, list. I've been to at least... I've been to... Uh, well, most of them. A pub called... Mo- like At least one I pub can, with Yeah, I can names. think of three or four no, that are in I, this area. Yeah, I, I can think of three or four <clears throat> Red Lions, for example, in, in this yeah, area. Yeah, I mean, you, you wouldn't have to travel more than about five miles to come across a Red Lion, surely. No. I'd imagine White Horse and White Hart are probably right up there as well, in this area. Yeah, bloody loads yeah like uh, yeah Banbury's got four or five of those yeah the, the Plough and Adderbury isn't there yeah Bell uh-huh. New Inn we should just Swan. say by the way for people who aren't familiar we come from Dennington a, a, t- a small market ex market town notorious for its number of public houses I can't remember what it had at its peak I think it had as many as 12 pubs in the past which for the size of this place is it's incredibly small for a town it's, it's quite a large village but very 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 small town and uh, it currently has five establishments five? isn't it five? five Deadly Arms Red Lion uh-huh. Unicorn Crown and Tons Legion uh, I guess Holcomb, Holcomb doesn't, exist, doesn't anymore. exist anymore I guess it was five yeah five but again still well catered five more. definitely <laughs> So, for the finale, Mike, I thought we'd have a bit of fun, okay? Pub names. Weird and wonderful pub names in the UK. I've decided to come up with a list. And you basically have to tell me (laughs) whether the names that I'm reading out are real or just made up, okay? You bloody idiot. Yeah, I've done a little bit of research on this. So, I I don't want any ponderance, okay? Instant answer. Yeah, Mm. uh, real or fake. Here we go. Thatcher's head. Real. Cock and camel. (laughs) <laughs> oh, real. Golden Ghost? Real. The Horny Sailor? <laughs> real. The Turk's Head? Real. Ye old trip to Jerusalem? Fake. The Grotty Grog House? <laughs> Fake. Pilgrim's Progress? I'm going to say real. The Cat and Custard Pot? <laughs> <laughs> Fake. The Cock and Pussy? <laughs> I wish it was real, but I'm going to say fake. <laughs> the Horse Harridan. Real. The Vestal Virgin. Real. And the Jolly Taxpayer. Um, do they exist? Um, I oh, know. I'm going to. I'm going to say. I'm going to say real. The Honest Politician. Definitely fake. The no Quiet Woman. Quiet Woman. Again, <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure there's such a. No, um, Quiet Woman. I'm going to say real. I think there's a pub somewhere called that. Okay. Nowhere in particular. <laughs> Fake. The Moron's Wager. Real. The Jap's Eye. <laughs> <laughs> Fake. The Blind Harlot. Real. Ye old Fighting Cocks. <laughs> um, Fake. Bishop's Finger. Real. The Kidnapped Infant. Fake. Boiled Bones Tavern. Real. I like to think so anyway. <laughs> I bet you would. Okay. So, a quick roundup of those answers that you gave. Okay. <clears throat> Thatcher's Head, you said real. It's fake, I'm afraid. I made that one up. Although I'm sure there are a lot of northern towns particularly who'd like that to be their name. Cock and Camel, you said real. And yes, it is indeed a real name. Uh, Ghoul and Ghost, you said real, fake I'm afraid, and I'm afraid there's no such pub as far as I know called the Horny Sailor either. Oh, uh... <laughs> the Turk's Head, you said real, that's correct. Your trip to Jerusalem is actually, not only is it real, but it has a claim to be the oldest pub in Britain. It's really? in Nottinghamshire. Huh. And and your trip to Jerusalem, 
because it dates back to it dates back to when uh, I, I, not the Crusades, but some kind of Christian pilgrimage to obviously the Holy City. Grotty Grog House, you said fake. Yeah, it was fake. Pilgrim's Progress. Again, it obviously, it's a very famous book, and there's a Weatherspoons pub also called The Pilgrim's Progress. Cat and Custard Pot, you said fake. That's actually real. Bloody hell. <clears throat> Cock and Pussy, <laughs> as we all know, unfortunately, it's fake. The Horse, I think I said Haradin. The Horse Haridan is fake, and The Vestal Virgin is fake. I think you both said they were both real. Jolly Taxpayer, you said they were real. Yeah, that's real. As is the honest politician that you said was fake. That's a real pub. There is no such thing. Uh, there isn't, but that's why it's such a great name. The Quiet Woman. Again, you suggested there's no such thing. That is a real pub, yes. Nowhere in nowhere in particular is a real pub. You said it was fake. Yeah. The Morons Wager. Yeah, I'm afraid that is fake. The Japs Eye. <laughs> Didn't you say... You said it was fake and it yeah, was fake. It uh, the Blind Harlot, you said was fake and is. The Old Fighting Cox, I'm afraid, is real. And is in the Guinness Book of Records as being the oldest pub in the UK. So The oh. Old Fighting Cox is a real pub. Perhaps the oldest. Uh, Bishop's Finger, you said was real and it is. Kidnapped Infant, you said was fake and is. And Boiled Bones Tavern, you claim was real. I'm afraid I just made it up. Oh. But we had a lot of fun. Um, and we have kind of overrun our time but then it is a subject very close to Mike's heart and of course we all love a good pub so nothing left to say really but we're off to the pub aren't we Mike? we are <laughs> so, we're uh, down a boozer 